Jean Calmont lived to be 122, the oldest human being that we know of. When she was 13, she met Vincent van Gogh, but by the time she died, we had the internet. Even the longest human life is nothing to this tree. This guy was just a sapling around the beginning of the Mayan calendar. And by the time Stonehenge had been constructed, he was already hundreds of years old. Today, you can take a picture of this still living bristlecone pine with your iPhone. Earth is full of really old things. Most of them are dead, but not all of them. We live alongside a shadow universe where age is measured in thousands of years and where organisms of every shape and size redefine what it means to live. For nearly a decade, artist and photographer Rachel Sussman has been seeking out these organisms all over the world. The oldest living things in the world are a record and celebration of our past, a call to action in the present, and a barometer of our future. Scientists have yet to solve the mystery of how bristle cones and other long-living organisms get to be so old, and we have no idea how many of nature's senior citizens remain undiscovered. Even their ages are often estimates. What we do know is most of them are plants. You only have to look at one baobab to realize that longevity is not a beauty contest. Old things are often ugly because every living thing has a finite amount of energy with which to grow, reproduce, and do life stuff. In other words, if you've got limited resources, you're better off taking care of your kids than fixing up the house. Pando, an 80,000-year-old forest of quaking aspen, is really 47,000 or so genetically identical trees, one single organism growing from the same roots. Instead of putting your genetically diverse eggs in one basket, many of Earth's oldest living things use this kind of clonal strategy to survive. We can take a lesson from the trees. Survival takes cooperation. And many of Earth's oldest residents are found in places where you or I wouldn't last a day let alone 2,000 years. It takes these map lichens from frigid Greenland a century to grow a single centimeter. And in the Mojave Desert, yucca and creosote bushes may go two years without rain. Even though some parts of the Atacama Desert have been without rain since records began, the Yoretta, a relative of parsley, survives. As with deep water, it's a battle to stay in deep time. We're constantly brought back to the surface, engaged in our thoughts and needs of the moment. This black coral, this barrel sponge, the oldest animal on Earth, or this meadow of seagrass. How many long-living species do Earth's unexplored oceans hold? Extreme longevity can lull us into a false sense of permanence we fall into a quotidian reality devoid of long-term thinking, certain that things which have been there forever will remain unchanging. But being old is not the same as being immortal. Even for the longest living, death can happen in an instant. The senator, one of the oldest cypress trees in the world, burned to the ground in 2012 thanks to two rather young humans who lit a fire in its hollow trunk. This Swedish spruce survived as a low shrub for 9,500 years, but as this mountaintop climate has become warmer, a single trunk has risen above the rest. We don't yet know the effects of our changing climate or whether these ancient species will be able to adapt, but we can hope. I mean, they've proven that they know a thing or two about survival. These senior species might also hold clues to how life started in the first place. In 2007, those map lichens survived atmospheric re-entry on a simulated meteorite. And billions of years ago, these stromatolites, ancient communities of photosynthetic bacteria that are equal parts biology and geology, may have exhaled the first breaths of life-giving oxygen. And finally, these bacteria take the cake for oldest living thing in the world. Buried in Siberian permafrost, not growing or dividing, they're not in suspended animation. They've been actively repairing their cells for half a million years. What do you think they're waiting for? Like it or not, most of us live for the moment, for the day or the month. Look back at your life. Think of everything that you've forgotten. How aware are we of passing years or decades? 
When we look at them from the frame of deep time, a bigger picture emerges, and we start to see how all of the individuals have stories, and that all of those stories are in turn interconnected, and in turn inextricably connected to us all. Without an awareness of the past and our connection to it, we're doomed to repeat today's problems tomorrow. Maybe by looking wide-eyed into deep time, we can understand what it really means to live beyond this blink of an eye. Stay curious. Special thanks to Rachel Sussman, whose decade-long journey to photograph Earth's most ancient living things is chronicled in her book, The Oldest Living Things in the World. You can find a link down in the description, and it's worth spending a little bit of time with.